Hello. Anchor. Sure. How's everyone doing today? So I was going to invite my panel up and have them introduce themselves and also share with me their first job in digital media. Alex? Wow, off the bat. Okay, Alex Schneider. I'm the VP of Client Strategy at the Trade Desk. And is it weird if I say this is my first job in digital? Um, I joined the Trade Desk seven years ago, and I, I came from the startup world and really just wanted to join a startup and did not know it was going to turn into this. Very good. Art? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Art Muldoon. I'm the co-CEO of Amnet US. Uh, I've been in digital for a while. In 95, I was in a management consulting, living here in LA, helping the studios evaluate what digital means from production to distribution to projection. Um, but my first job in digital was probably when I moved to Seattle right after that and joined Corbis Images to help launch the first photo licensing site for prosumer customers. Very good. And Megan? Um, I'm Megan Paliuka, and I lead programmatic for Omnicom Media Group. Um, my first job, I started in this industry 11 years ago, and I was at Wright Media. So the first advertising exchange, really the, the launch of, of programmatic. Wow, incredible. So we've got the beginning seven years ago at Trade Desk, and Matt? Uh, I'd probably go a little bit further back. You may be able to uh, take a guess. Um, so my first job in digital was I was the publisher of Macworld Magazine back in the mid to late 90s, and we launched Macworld.com. And so that was our fir my first sort of foray into the space. So Very probably good. 1997, 98? Wow, I got you all. Early days. 1995, Sidewalk, Microsoft, selling local businesses, knocking on the doors of what the internet was in San Francisco. Yeah, that's a good one. So that's a good one. Very good one. Indeed. So today we're talking about programmatic. And at Luma, something that we've been talking about specifically around what are the top 10 issues happening in the space. And when you think about those issues, you think about transparency, fraud, viewability, uh, measurement, ad adjacency, which is obviously a big topic right now. And in my perspective, this is nothing new. We've been hearing these kind of concerns for such a long time. And I really feel that programmatic has gotten the worst rap out of it all. And so I want to talk about that, thinking about the biggest issues that we're facing as an industry, thinking about programmatic and why programmatic is getting the worst rap. So talk to me a little bit about what you're seeing from kind of a marketer perspective and the industry perspective, Matt. I mean, so, so marketers want um, viewable, verified by third party audiences that have a likelihood to engage with their products. Uh, and at the end of the day, they want value. I think that some of the news recently about ad adjacencies and brand safety, um, it feels like the folks that are maybe not the best practitioners of programmatic, um, and maybe even the JV team are the folks that are being exposed. It kind of remember, reminds me of like the late 90s when I opened yeah. up an E-Trade account yep. because I, I thought I could trade and do a better job of managing my money than someone at uh, Morgan Stanley. It just doesn't work that way. Right. And actually, the, the New York Times article, I think, a couple of days ago that talked about uh, Chase Bank um, running on TrueView was running across 400,000 400, different YouTube sites uh, right. trying to you know, engage with customers. I mean, we would never do that. And I'm sure the folks on the, the dais also wouldn't suggest their customers do that. So it feels like it's, you know, um, some of the newer people in the space, or maybe some of the brands that took it in-house that don't really right. understand how difficult yep. it is to stay ahead. Yep. Anyone else? Alex, uh, I mean, I guess you're seeing things from a technology platform and giving people the platform to do it. I mean, what are you seeing from a perspective of, are they driving the cars off the wrong street, off the wrong lane? It, yeah, so a great question. I think, you know, programmatic, you know, gets a bad rap because you can measure everything, you know, and you can, report on everything, and so uh, we're putting it all out there <laughs> for, for the world to critique, so um, you can nitpick everything, and you have the full control to, to take action on, on what you see. Um, so, so I think that's the first thing, and then, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, just as, assigning, um, you know, the, sort of the, the cost effectiveness versus, versus the targeting, I mean, uh, you know, you can really, you know, pay the right price, impression by impression. And so 
yeah, a, a lot of people are going to do that wrong. Um, a lot of people are going to do that right. It scares me that there's a lot of brands out there that are trying to do this themselves. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of experience both in this room and on, on the stage here who, who you know, uh, th through all the testing and experimenting are, yep. are obviously doing it right. Absolutely. What I think is interesting as well and people don't bring up is you actually can, um, like we have more transparency in programmatic than we do when we're doing a direct buy. So we categorize globally at what we call, we call it a, um, a SKU level. So inventory source, ad format, ad size. Um, so inventory source meaning through which exchange, what right. site, is it mobile app, it, um, is it mobile web? So at a very, very granular level, we've categorized basically every impression we've ever served against right. and have performance data, viewability data, availability data against that. That's not the type of visibility that you can have in, um, in a world when you're just throw, giving tags to publishers. Right. And what about from a scale perspective? I mean, you've got quality, quantity. I mean, how do you really piece those two together in a way um, in an environment that's safe? And what are you seeing maybe from your perspective, how are brands doing it correctly? Yeah. So actually, w one of the things that uh, this, this group, and then um, there's a few members of, as well as on the progr 4A's programmatic council that, that we're working on, is actually um, delivering a, a white paper later this summer where um, we're essentially talking about the value of effectiveness and not just efficiency. Right. Um, so the importance of brands having quality KPIs rather than cost savings KPIs. So like specifically what I see is that there, there's a bulk of, of brands that um, are very focused on co um, cost savings really at, um, and not as much on quality. And right. um, in those instances, like I'll give a very specific example of how this relates to programmatic is um, we'll have like for like inventory that can be bought direct or bought through programmatic, but then there is a DSP technology fee and an SSP yep. technology fee and they'll say, oh, well, I don't want to move it to programmatic because of that because I just want the lowest cost. Right. Anyone who's looking at business re results and quality KPIs will know that even though it is a bit, um, there are those fees, um, yep. it will deliver better business results. So yep. something I think, you know, we have actually have a representative from every holding company on the council that has submitted case studies and kind of having an aligned point of view to push the market that way. And so Art, I'd be curious, um, where do you see the future of programmatic? I mean, obviously with Dentsu's acquisition of Merkle, um, where do you see the growth opportunity? I mean, one thing that we see from a Luma perspective is programmatic isn't just display, it's video, it's mobile, it's direct mail, it's you know, addressable TV. Talk to me a little bit about how you're pulling it all together and where the future of the market is going. Well, sure. And We've set high expectations for ourselves and for the industry through programmatic. And I think the, the new chapter that we've really ushered in with programmatic as you know, really helping marketers understand how to increase mm -hmm. the, the nature and the quality of the engagement with their consumers. And so if you look at it as the evolution of consumer engagement, um, at the same time we're talking about the opportunities to track and measure better consumer engagement. Um, we all want to subscribe to this mission of making marketing work better for, for brands. Uh, but at the same time, the consumer media consumption is as fragmented as it ever has been. Yes. And so we're also then simultaneously taking advantage of the fact that we can you know, reach audiences in sort of hyper-fragmented environments. Um, so that means cross-channel, cross-device, yep. uh, but we want to use programmatic to be able to do it from sort of a, a centralized, you know, one-stop location. So we can now, you know, reach an audience in an integrated way across, well, we talk about nine channels, display, video, mobile, social, email, in-stream audio, digital out of home, addressable TV, and native. Um, but ultimately, for a brand to succeed, um, you want to reach this fragmented audience, but with scale. Right. So that's where the sort of reaching in the fragment, but piecing it back together to get scale comes into play. And programmatic is extremely powerful in doing that. Yeah. Um, and then, though, as we talk about scale, we then get into the questions about how do we filter for quality yeah. so that as we're repackaging that scale reach, 
and measuring the engagement, we know it's a quality experience. So that's what we're, that's the mission, and it's why everybody is so excited about it. Um, but there are challenges, and, and I think to Matt's point, um, we want to, this is for professionals and who've got a depth and breadth of capabilities to execute properly. Yep. Um, but it's also why there are so many solutions in the marketplace that can confuse people and why you really need a concentrated effort yeah. to achieve this successfully. Just kind of why the Illumiscape yeah. exists, there obviously. And it's funny, if you take the Illumiscapes and you look at the company that actually do you know, over 50 mil to 100 mil, all of the amount of companies shrink very small. And so you start to see the fragmentation a little bit smaller in that sense from a technology perspective. Yeah, I think we, you know, we, much of the work we do for um, our agency and marketing partners are actually sort of sifting through all the nonsense mm -hmm. in the marketplace, whether it's data, tech, and media. And because we often very, very often manage and test some of these different solutions, we see very clearly what's unique and valuable and then maybe what's sort of overpriced and hyped. And um, if you're inferring that maybe there'll be fewer companies in the ad tech space going forward, I think it is going to be um, less crowded, but the, the complexity is still there. So you're going to need, I think, uh, professionals to, to, to manage this and to stay ahead of it. Absolutely. And obviously the growth isn't just here. It's across all of the different channels and programmatic efficiencies. Yeah, cli clients don't come to, I think, any of us and go, uh, we'd like to reach these people on iPads and then these people on their smart TV <laughs> yeah. and then these folks. What they say is we want to connect with our audiences, right, and they're leveraging their first party data more, more and more, and they want to know how we can accentuate that and, and to develop it in ways that they can tell compelling stories. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the challenges we have in programmatic is we talk so much about our ad tech stack and data yep. and analytics that we forget about the storytelling part of it. Yep. And that's about using that data to, to do dynamic, creative, and more compelling messaging and sequential messaging and knowing, by the way, when not to market. And that's something that I think that uh, you'll see more and more of as, uh, as programmatic matures. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about measurement and some of the challenges as an industry we're facing. And at Luma, we'll be releasing um, kind of the evolution of measurement. We've come pretty far. So when you think about measurement, Alex, maybe it's a good to start um, specifically with you because you're seeing it from all different angles. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about measurement and how you guys think about it at the trade desk and uh, kind of the challenges you're facing. Yeah, so seven years ago, I think it was all about campaign performance. I was great to see in the title of this panel that we're talking about business results, right? So uh, there's just more of a focus on, you know, not just like what do I need to do to hit those KPIs in the campaign, but what do I need to do to, that's in the best interest of the advertiser. And, and sometimes there's a conflict between, you know, hitting that CPA goal versus what's gonna, you know, be the best in, um, for, for that end advertiser. And, and we've literally had debates around, um, you know, not wanting to target you know, too close to a brick and mortar store because they're less likely to con convert online, they're gonna convert in the store. And I don't care about, you know, those in-store visits. So, uh, you know, going beyond just, um, you know, the, those online conversions and measuring, um, you know, offline attribution, I think is gonna be huge this year. Excellent. Are there any examples you guys can give um, specifically? Well, um, so, you know, measurement and attribution is just talking about value, right? At the end of the day, how do we figure out the value? And so um, ideally, we get to a point where, and I don't think we're that far away, where we can actually show um, we've, you know, used first party data, developed these audiences, and then optimized to these audiences across whatever adjustable channel um, customers are on, and then, and then uh, most importantly, drove a sale, whether it was offline or online. So at the end of the day, the best metric would be able to sort of measure sales. Um, we're not there um, all the time, but we, we've, um, we've done some interesting deals in the uh, uh, media space. We bought Triad, which does something very similar to what Amazon, I think, um, Target was just talking about having a media network. At the end of the day, we can now work with uh, CPG companies we can take a look at their branding efforts and their shopper efforts and align those and yep. then measure the results, the actual lift in store to people that were exposed to the ad. 
both offline and online. And so I think that that's the kind of stuff we're all sort of looking to do. And uh, you know, at some point, it would be wonderful if uh, maybe instead of a CPM, you get paid based on an outcome. Did you right. drive the sale? What was the value? Yeah. And the media partner becomes a true partner. It's funny, when we cover um, programmatic in our state of digital media, we look at it as the growth is just there, and it keeps going exponentially every year, every year, and it keeps knocking it out of the park. And then we show kind of, uh, when you look at the expense of what advertising is, we believe that it will be changed. It won't be an expense programmatic. It'll be moving to a cost of goods sold, much more like you see with search. Um, it's guaranteed on the, you know, it's guaranteed performance. And when you think about the duopoly of what's happening today, f Google and Facebook, and how they've won and had had armor, I mean, really all of that, only way to break that armor is performance, right? Because they've won off of performance, they've won off of first party data, they've won off of connecting with the consumer. And so obviously those are pretty big opportunities. Megan, anything you want to comment on that? Um, well, I, I think one piece kind of related to your point is, you know, we have this conversation about working media versus non-working media, yeah. right? Um, and it's, it's, whenever that conversation comes up, it's a frustration, it often is a frustration point when it's not taken with value um, and business results into consideration, all right? So I think, um, like, if you think about categorization of non-working data, um, non-working media, so that means data, technically, even though you're buying audiences. Like, if you think of that end experience, it's the end consumer experience, so it's a person on that media, right? But if, we, if data cost gets too high, oh, that it negatively impacts non-working media, which really isn't the way that we should be looking at it. We okay. should be looking at it based on um, the impact it has. Right. And then Art, maybe you can talk to me a little bit about you know, how identity and programmatic, how you see all of that coming together. Um, sure. Obviously well, with the data set that you're sitting on and those connections of those. Yeah, aspects. what we see is for us, it's the programmatic is really an audience data management and activation discipline. Okay. And so the, you know, the ability for an agency to work with clients as a steward for their audience data, both as it exists today, you know, marketers have legacy marketing data warehouses. Um, how do you extract the information from CRM data, from sales data, from online data, um, to help create competitive advantage for your clients? And so we, we really start with the audience data management that's, that exists, but then also understanding information that you can create seed lists. And then we work towards broader you know, audience identity and IDs to you know, deterministically match um, opportunities to reach segments that your clients know are productive and important to them. And so in this way, I think we're moving from, really another part of the evolution is away from the traditional persona, um, where you know, one identity is used as a catch-all for many different opportunities that a client's looking at to you know, using data and technology to very much pinpoint um, types of audiences with different affinities at different moments right. and being able to you know, activate on that in a productive way and not just get so watered down that you don't get to anything. But so the idea of an audience and audience identity and the ability to measure and track yep. that identity um, you know, with, in a privacy compliant way is, is another part of the benefits of programmatic media that we haven't had in the traditional marketing as, as, as easily as there is today. Yep. And then I guess, you know, just leaving it, what are some of the best practices that you guys have seen? I mean, we talked about this task force, some of the results. I mean, talk to me a little bit about how can marketers really walk away with this opportunity to take programmatic to the next level. I mean, we've talked about different aspects, but Megan, maybe if you can talk a little bit about any kind of success stories and leave the group uh, with some information on that. Yeah, sure, so I think it, it really is, um, right, it, it's simple. We really um, want to be getting to quality KPIs, so thinking about, right, is it human, is it viewable, um, is it an, an on-target audience? Kind of funny that we're saying, is it human? It's, it's quite amazing that that's still a challenge. Like, the number one, like, one of the key, key indicator of fraudulent inventory is if you have a really cheap, highly viewable inventory, yeah. right? Like, yeah. 
So um, I, I think moving towards kind of the right quality KPIs is, and even working with procurement departments on that, right? There's just been so many years of like for like cost savings. How do you change that conversation to cost per valuable impression, cost yep. per view? Um, so, so that's really you know what we're working on as the council to try to move forward, particularly for programmatic. So it's education in a lot of the perspective, education around really lifting up their bar, not letting it be a price game, right? Um, measuring the right outcomes and not um, bad ones, right? Brand safety measures, um, thinking about transparency. Um, any other aspects that we should bring to the Well, I look at the, the opportunity to use programmatic to tell better marketing stories for clients and really providing insights. And so, you know, we say there's no dead ends. It's not just about planning and, and delivering media and, and depositing a report on the client's doorstep and saying, look at that, isn't that great? We, we want to help them interpret what we've just accomplished and what are the insights that the marketers can, can take to other parts of their, 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 their strategy. So, you know, we, we, yeah. we can run an audit of an audience that uh, maybe have, have high conversions in the Northwest versus the Southeast and, and provide the client with some behavioral, demographic, psychographic insights about how their customers are performing um, or not in different areas. And it often sparks conversations and curiosity by the client to you know, see that this is a pulse yeah. um, that's, that they, that's valid that they can take to other discussions they're having around marketing or sales strategy. And so I think for the first time, it's you know, not that six month delay that an econometric analysis might provide, but it's much more real time gauge that, that is um, insightful for a, and actionable. I think just to, to jump on what Art said, I mean, um, advantage for marketers used to be how much budget you had, how much you spend, and I think today it's now about how much you know about your consumer, and then most importantly, how you can activate that um, across all the different touch yep. points. And consumers nowadays, and you see it in your own life, if you, you know, call up an 800 number of an airlines and they don't know who you are or when your flight is or, you know, potentially, uh, how good a customer you are, you get annoyed. Um, I think that we're gonna start seeing that online as well. Yeah. There's an expectation. And so the most progressive marketers are leveraging their first party data and then figuring out how to engage and have those compelling conversations with customers and prospects. Yeah. Again, it's everything they do, optimized sort of holistically across um, screens and forgetting of being channel agnostic. And then, as you were saying, right, like getting those insights and that those, those insights exactly. back into the business so you can sort of leverage that across everything you do. Yeah, and I feel like um, clients, you know, half of them are progressive around understanding the customer data and how powerful that is. Some of it are in the mid-level, and I would say most of them are in that mid-section because um, they know they need the data, they know they could use it for programmatic, for efficiencies, but they just don't know how to get their head around it in the digital space, where in offline they've been much stronger. I don't, I don't find that all of our clients are, are really, really smart about data and uh, never make any mistakes really? or have, ask any questions that they should already know the answer so to. At least that's our, our customers. Yeah, yeah, so that's amazing. <laughs> I just want to work for you guys then, because that sounds like an easy job. <laughs> yeah. You're right, they, they're, they're, all yeah. over. they're all over the map, but I think that um, we, we've talked about this backstage and on phones and stuff, is that they're, they're much more sophisticated right. and they really are trying to figure out how do they leverage their own first party data. So yeah. they're looking for enterprise DMP yep. um, uh, you know, solutions and they want sort of recommendations from their agency partners. And then most importantly, they want to be smart internally because I think we've, digital and programmatic, um, sometimes have overpromised and underdelivered. So. You know, going back a few years, I think that right now it's about um, delivering measurable results and outcomes right. for clients, and that's going to win the day. Absolutely, I agree. And I guess, Alex, from your perspective, when you look at the evolution of the platform of where you guys are and where you've been over the last seven years, um, what would you say are maybe some of the areas that are growing the fastest on your platform? Sure. Um, 
so if you look back seven years, I mean, there was a lot of focus on, you know, low CPMs, right? And now it's all about being expressive in your bidding, and it's not just, you know, who can bid the lowest, it's, you know, who can, who can be the most expressive in that, in that bidding and in those auctions. Um, so a, as a result, you know, you're seeing uh, higher CPM inventory, you know, PMPs are, are the fastest growing uh, spend on our platform. Uh, you know, seven years ago it was all display. Now, it, you know, display has just been a dress rehearsal for all of these channels. Um, you know, audio and native are obviously new and, you know, fastest growing as a percentage. Um, mobile video I is growing really fast. Um, but back to your earlier question, you know, you mentioned transparency. D just if there's any advice I can give to, to advertisers who are considering this is just, you know, be wary of the the easy button, right? There's a lot, I think a lot of solutions out there that are just selling the easy button. And transparency isn't just about reporting, it's not just about the data. Um, you know, transparency into, you know, into the optimizations, you know, you know, you know what is that easy button doing? Um, and from what, you know, the biggest change I've seen is just a, a hunger for control. I think a lot of our clients mm. are, are control freaks. You know, they want to be able to control everything um, because their advertisers have a very specific um, you know, directions and goals, and um, yeah, just, just make sure you, you know what it's doing, and there, you know, if you know what it's doing, you have a story to tell your advertiser of, you know, why it's working, why it's gonna get better. And if you were gonna say, I'll leave this as the final question, um, if you were gonna say, if we could put the past in the past and keep moving forward and not having the same conversations that we've been having for the last five years, <laughs> Um, what would the next conversation sound like, or like help me to think about where where we'll be? Like the re reality in talking about these things, we're pointing out the problems and where we want to go farther. But it re it's actually been we've had programmatic around for ten years, right? Yeah. And it's I think you know as we've been preparing for this panel, we're talking through it. I think one of the things we've all agree on is programmatic really has moved from the edge to the core of the business, right? Yep. It's becoming the majority of spend on on, on any of the like. Um, the clients who are looking at business results, it's the majority of their um, campaigns is, um, digital campaigns is right. programmatic. Programmatic is replacing digital, right? So I think if we think about where we are overall, um, it's taken a while, but we are going, um, we are there and continuing to go in the right direction. Yep. Art, anything you wanted to add to that? Well, I, I, again, I emphasize just the tools that we have now to increase the satisfaction for marketers about as to the way advertising is reaching and engaging their audiences. And, and I think as, we've turned, as we turn the page and we look forward to the programmatic future, I, I really believe it's just better marketing with more you know, understanding of audience engagement and how brands are really um, able to interact with their core audiences through the, through the best advertising. We haven't talked about creative yet, but there's right. an important role the creative has in, in the way we optimize the experience that we as consumers expect to have um, engaging in digital content. Yeah, I would agree 100%. And it's funny because creative is always left to the side, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I mean, fewer conversations about yeah. channels and more conversations about audiences, for sure. And um, I think we heard the panel prior, Christy from Target talking about like, her lead person is a data and analytics expert. I think that we're going to see more of those people leading engagements, both on client side but on the agency side. So I think that that's going to bode well for the industry um, and for companies like Zaxxis and some of our competitors, friendly competitors on stage. Yeah. So I appreciate it and thank you guys for today. I think that was a good recap of everything. Um, I will definitely say from a Luma perspective, we see how it's all kind of coming together. Programmatic is at the core. And the growth opportunity for programmatic across any of the agencies or your clients isn't just in one channel, it's in multiple. And uh, you will absolutely see data and identity as kind of a core aspect to that. And with that, I'll leave it. Thank you guys for Thanks. being here today, and thank you for having us.